me too. Well, I'm going to tell you about Jonathan Livingston Siegel, who wanted more than anything else to know how to fly. Well, he knew how to fly, but he wanted to perfect his flying skills. Most seagulls don't love to fly. They just fly like we sort of walk to get from one place to another. Um, they fly to get food. They fly because they, they like to eat. So they fly to the places where they can find food. That's the only reason seagulls fly. But Jonathan, J.L., we'll call him J.L. because Jonathan Livingston is just a lot of syllables. J.L. wasn't really concerned about eating. All he wanted to do was fly. He wanted to spend his time flying, not worrying about fish or limes, as some, someone told me uh, seagulls like to eat limes, too, and french fries. For, Potato chips, yes. So J.L., he would spend his time, instead of fishing, he would spend his time climbing and soaring and diving and then trying to figure out how to gain more speed so he could climb and dive or to soar just above the level of the water without actually going in the water or to do all of this without falling, because falling is a disgrace for seagulls. It's a bad thing. Um, it embarrasses them. And the other seagulls didn't really understand J.L. in his wish to fly. They, they kind of made fun of him and treated him badly. They thought he was being silly. And even his parents were dismayed at his unending desire to fly. His mother, she would say, why, John, why? Have you ever heard your mother say something like that to you? Why, John, why? Why can't you be like the other gulls? Why don't you leave flying to the pelicans? And why don't you eat, son, your feathers and bones? <laughs> Have you ever heard your parents say your skin and bones? Well, no. <laughs> I haven't either, but. <laughs> and then his father would join in, and he, more business like, he would say, See here, Jonathan, winter is coming soon. The boats will be gone from where they get their fish. The boats will be gone, and the fish will be swimming deep. If you must study, why don't you learn or study ways? to get food more easily. That's why seagulls fly. That's the whole reason they fly. Well, Jonathan wanted to be a good son. He really wanted to, so he'd spend the next few days after such a lecture from his parents, screeching and squawking with the rest of the flock, fighting over scraps of food they had found from around the fishing boats and the piers. But it all seemed so pointless to him because all he wanted to do was fly. There was flying to be done. So soon he would be off experimenting again with climbing and gliding and soaring and diving and speed. One day he found himself climbing very high, 2,000 feet above the Black Sea. That's really high. And without one thought about failure or death or injury or what could go wrong or what the other gulls thought about him, he brought his forewings tightly into his body and fell into a hard vertical dive, straight down dive. The wind was a monster roar at his head, 70 miles an hour, 90 miles, 120 miles, and faster still. He was so happy. He closed his eyes to slits against the wind and rejoiced. He was alive, trembling ever so slightly with delight, proud that his fear was under control. And he was doing what he wanted most in the world to do. And he soared through the rest of his life. He ate a little food now and again so that he could continue to fly. But that's how J.L. Siegel spent the rest of his life. So that's kind of an abbreviated version of Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And I want to tell you that that story has always spoken to me, and a lot of us here, a lot of your parents know this story. 
And it speaks to me because it talks about courage. Have you ever been afraid? Yeah, we all get afraid sometimes. But this speaks to me about courage and about passion and about following your heart's desire. So I brought you something to take with you because I really want you to remember the story of Jonathan Livingston Seagull. So I, I, I couldn't decide what would help you remember better than a feather. So I, I couldn't find seagull feathers. Where I live, there aren't a lot of seagulls. So these are duck feathers, but they're very similar to seagull feathers. And they are um, actually not from the beach. They're from Hobby Lobby. So they're sanitary. <laughs> Your parents don't have to worry. But I want you each to take a seagull, and Brian is going to help me pass some out. And I hope that you will think about Jonathan Livingston whenever you look at your feather or let it tickle your face a little bit. You don't want one? Okay, you don't have to have one. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. And the feather? Thank you. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Maybe I could get some, could you help pass out to the kids in the back? Thank you. Does everybody have a feather coming to them? I don't want to miss any any yes. Oh there you go. Could you pass that? Oh there I think we got him. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we're going to sing you to your classes now. Thank you. Okay.